Oh, for part A, we're looking at how much work to move an electron from A to B. And so we know that work is the change in potential energy. And so we can say delta EP. And we can think about that in, the, in terms of work can be calculated as force times displacement for a constant force or an average force. Or sometimes just doing the difference in potential energy is easiest. In other words, if we were picking a box off the floor and putting it on a table, we could say, well, the work done was the change in potential energy from the box at the top of the table to uh, it being on the floor. And that change in potential energy was due to the work. And so they were equivalent. And so that's what we find easy to do here is the change in potential energy, knowing that potential energy is QV or Q delta V, the change in V. And we are looking at the Q and that's the object that's being moved. And we're told that it's an electron. And so the elemental charge, uh, 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19 coulombs. And then we have a delta V and the change in voltage here. So we can look at it and see that going from A to B, we're on the same equipotential line, which means there's no change in voltage. Or if you would rather go through the calculation, you could say the voltage at B minus the voltage at A, 200 minus 200 is zero. And either way, uh, you do end up with a zero in there, and zero times anything is zero. And so we would say that that is zero joules of work. On to B. Uh, how much work to move a proton from C to B? And so again we will consider our work to be the change in potential energy there. Uh, no other uh, transfer of energy to any other form. So uh, that's an, a nice, easy way to do that. Again, Q delta V. And uh, for the Q, again, that's the particle being moved. And we see that that's a proton in this case. So again, the elemental charge, but this time a plus and that's in coulombs, and then we need the change in voltage. Now, the change in voltage, again, it's always the final minus the initial, so the final voltage here is 200 volts, and the initial voltage where that move started, 100 volts. And so 200 minus 100, we've got 100 volts, so really multiplying by 100, uh, tells us that we would be moving the decimal place over twice, so that would be 17. And the units, we think of it as coulombs times volts. And volts, remember, is the same as uh, joules per coulomb. So we can envision that the coulombs cancel out and again left with joules. So that makes sense. Okay, so uh, we could stop there and say, okay, we ended up with a positive potential energy, and, and that's great, as expected, but it's always good to double check. And we know that uh, we're dealing with a proton in part B, and we're pushing it from C to B, so we're pushing it closer to that positive charge in the middle there. And we know that two positive charges, two like charges, are going to repel each other. So we're pushing it in, just like uh, compressing a spring. And so, yeah, that is an increase in potential energy, and therefore that is a positive work. So, yeah, just a quick thought about that, uh, you know, on a test or on a question that you're doing. Definitely worth the few seconds to think that through. Uh, part C. So we're looking at a proton released at A and what is its velocity at D. So again, we're talking about a proton. So uh, we are going to see it repelling from this charge that we're looking at in the middle there. And it's if we were to put it at A and release it, it would start taking off to the left. And so by the time it got to D, it would definitely have some velocity because that we could look at that potential energy being converted into kinetic energy. So really what we've got going here is we have a conservation of energy question and we could start with E before equals E after. 
and go from there. Um, either way you do it, you're, you're going to end up saying that uh, our decrease in potential energy is going to be our increase in kinetic energy. And so let's go through that. And again, our potential energy, and we can say is Q delta V, um, and our kinetic energy, well, our same old handy kinetic energy formula. Now, at this point, you, you'd probably be wise to stop and say, we have two Vs in our equation, and Vs by their nature don't look a whole lot different with the small case and the uppercase. So um, what I usually do here is when we are mixing voltage and velocity together is let's just put little caps on the capital V and that will help us keep track that we don't mix them together and, and mess up our, our equations as we rearrange. So we rearrange this. We are solving for V. So let's rewrite this formula solved for our velocity, the lowercase v, and our equation would be 2q capital V, change in voltage there, all over the mass. And so putting in some numbers here, uh, we have, it's a proton, so again, elemental charge. And we are dropping 150 volts here. And we are dividing by the mass, which we can go to our formula sheet and look up the mass of a proton. That is the object that's being accelerated. And that's in kilograms. And the big square root around that. And we'd have to pull out our calculator and figure that out and come up with 1.7 times 10 to the 5 meters per second. Now, taking a look at that, and that's a really big velocity. So, um, yeah, you can write that out, uh, 1, 7, and 4 more zeros, and, and look at that and say, wow, that is very, very fast. And uh, we stop and think about that, and we are working with electrostatic forces. And electrostatic forces, as we know, are quite powerful. And we also, uh, thinking back to Newton's second law, um, acceleration is related to the force, which again is an electrostatic force, and, and inversely proportional to the mass. And we're dealing with a very, very little mass here, the mass of a proton. So for us to end up with a velocity, a very high speed here at D, um, yeah, we can make some sense out of that. So that's our question.